So that is the reason for the name change, which I'm really excited about. Because um, Life Design Plus, uh, you know, it's, it's everything about pursuing your authentic life, designing the life that you want to live. How do we get there? So what is the podcast, the show going to be about? What actually, I, I think of it more as this is a, a podcast channel that will have multiple shows on it. And I've always liked doing that with my podcast. So I... Well, hello and welcome to the Life Design Plus podcast, where we are mastering the art of living your authentic life. Now, if you are seeing this come up and you're used to subscribing to On Our Pursuit, don't worry, you're on the right show. I just decided to rebrand it, and I think I've mentioned it before. It's been mentioned on the daily notes and some of the writing I've been doing and on social media, but wanted to do an official episode, talk about the rebrand, why I changed the name, what's going to be expected to go forward. And then also I wanted to share a little bit from my recent series of talks called the Keep Pursuing series that just wrapped up last week. Share a little bit more about that, why it was what it was, uh, what I learned from it, and just share that experience, hopefully as a little bit of inspiration that will encourage you to go pursue the thing that you've always wanted to do or an idea that you have that you think is too crazy. Um, Through my experience, hopefully you can learn a little something and then you can pursue that and, and make that become a reality as well. So Um, Let's go back to Life Design Plus, the change in the name of the podcast. And I love the title On Our Pursuit. It very much represented what I wanted the show to to be about, what I wanted to try to encourage for people listening. But at the end of the day, what I realized was that On Our Pursuit means nothing to anybody outside of myself and maybe my close inner circle. Because when you look at the title, scrolling through podcasts, if you happen to see the thumbnail, most people don't even know that the letters of PRST are meant to be pronounced as pursuit. So you see this podcast on our PRST. What does that even mean? They don't know who I am. And if I'm trying to help people find the show, that that title doesn't really draw people in because it's so unknown. And while it hurt the ego a little bit to give that up because I loved it so much and I want pursuit to be this great brand that it will be one day. I decided that I needed a title that was easier to understand. And Life Design Plus is still a little vague, but I think when you hear Life Design, uh, you can kind of start to piece things together. Uh, You can see Mastering the Art of Living Your Authentic Life. Okay, now it's starting to make more connections. And then the title fits my brand, what it is that I'm writing about, what it is that I'm talking about, who I am. So the, the title was actually pretty easy to come up with. Life Design is actually the name of the planning relationship that I have at RLS Wealth. I have Life Design and Life Design Plus. We won't talk about that today, but there's a connection there from the podcast to my work as a financial advisor, if that ever were to be the route that someone might need to go in the future. So I wanted to shift away from the Pursuit brand, which still exists, prst.co still exists, and it is still a creative collective, which is what it always was supposed to be, but I was a little misdirected in the way that Pursuit was supposed to evolve. When I launched that brand... I thought that was going to be wherever I cre- where I would create things that were not coming from me as the financial advisor, it would live under the Pursuit brand. So you know, one day there will be courses to help you do things to align your spirit, mind, and body to begin to pursue your authentic life. That'll be online courses or resources. I thought that would always be on the Pursuit website, but what I've realized is that those will be on my personal website, which speaking of my personal website, if you haven't checked it out lately, go to justincastelli.io. Shout out to my friend Andy Kennedy, who is my web designer. Uh, We updated the branding of the justincastelli.io website to match, again, who I am today versus who I was five years ago when we built that page. So um, doing this, trying to connect all of the pieces so that whenever you find something from me, it all is tied together. So me, the advisor, focusing on life planning going forward ultimately helping people align their spirit, mind, and body to live their authentic life, bringing money into the picture when it's necessary is the same message you see over on my personal website as what you'll see on Arlos Wealth. So the Pursuit brand is no longer going to be the brand where those things live. There will be advisory services, life planning that will be Arlos Wealth, and then everything else will fall under my name, which is kind of a weird thing to think about, on my personal website. Pursuit is going to be the creative outlet for me to explore some of my creative interests uh, on the pursuit. I believe creativity is very important. I want to have a place that if I have something creative I want to explore, it can be done under the pursuit umbrella. So for instance, Life Design Plus is a pursuit podcast. Uh, Will this be a, 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 a podcast network in the future? I don't know. It could be. 
could be a network of just all my shows, or it could be a network where I identify people who have aligned messages and they become a pursuit podcast as well. Who knows? They don't want to put any um, expectations or put any uh, barriers to what it could be. I just want to have that. Um, doing the mini documentaries that I've done in, in the past, the shorts on my YouTube channel, those will all be pursuit uh, productions. So um, writing books in the, in the future, pursuit publishing, anything that's creative uh, that is an outlet for me that could be also outlets for others will fall under pursuit. So um, the clarity around how these all fit together is I have it now and it makes a lot more sense. So that is the reason of shifting away from trying to grow pursuit to be this brand that everybody knows to pursuit is going to be a little bit of a passion project company, a creative outlet for me. One day the clothing brand will come back. You see, I still have hoodies and things in the background. I, I do want to create this lifestyle brand that aligns with the message that I'm speaking and the work that I do at RLS Wealth so that people who are living their authentic life have a clothing brand that they are proud to wear that lets people know that they're living life on their terms. That'll come back in the future when the time is right. But um, if you remember, or if not, one of the first daily notes that I wrote uh, was about my word for 2023, which is simplify. So simplifying things so I can focus all of my energy on the things that are going to move the needle the most and growing my, my message, sharing my message, growing the audiences, allowing me to do the work that I do best. Um, that's where all my energy is going to go. And a clothing brand today is, is not it. One day it will be, but right now that's not it. So that is the reason for the name change, which I'm really excited about. Because um, Life Design Plus you know, it's, it's everything about pursuing your authentic life, designing the life that you want to live. How do we get there? So what is the podcast, the show going to be about? Well, actually, I, I think of it more as this is a, a podcast channel that will have multiple shows on it. And I've always liked doing that with my podcast. So I am going to be having uh, weekly episodes is the game plan. And um, I think that it's going to be something that I can commit to and stay to. So uh, I'm trying to do less talking about what I'm going to do and just doing it and then sharing about it later on. But you know, on this episode, the plan is to do a weekly episode. Maybe once, maybe the months I have an extra week, we won't have an episode, but um, having the same cadence to it as well. So the first week of the month will always be an interview. And these interviews will be highlighting people who have found and pursued their authentic life. And these episodes, I really want to spend a lot of time on the messy middle. You know, I want to talk about the life that they were living that really wasn't fulfilling, that they had some discontentment because they weren't aligned talk about how they found alignment, and more importantly, how they found their authentic life. But then I really want to talk about the process of moving from the past life to the authentic life, because it's easy to look at somebody who's living their authentic life, having success and, and want that, but we always skip over the hard work. So I want to spend a lot of time on those episodes talking about the messy middle. How did we make it happen? What were you feeling? What were the obstacles? What would you do different? And in creating an episode where you can be inspired by what the possibilities are, but learn from the journey because the journey is where all of the growth happens and we can learn from other people's journeys or as I like to call it, the pursuit. So that'll be the first episode of the month. Uh, the second episode of the month will be a interview with a subject matter expert. There are a lot of things that tie into alignment of spirit, mind, body, and money, uh, pursuing your authentic life that I know a little bit about, a little bit, a little bit to be dangerous, but not enough to be an expert. And I want to have experts on to talk about that. So the example I've been giving people is, you know, talking about neuroplasticity. I wrote about that this week in the Daily Notes. I know enough about neuroplasticity to know like what it is and how to explain it, but like to get deep into it, I don't. So one day it would be really cool to have Dr. Joe Dispenza on the podcast and talk about neuroplasticity. Until then, we'll have experts that maybe are not as well known, but are you know just as qualified from a understanding education standpoint. And it'll be kind of cool to try to identify the next Joe Dispenza, which is one of my goals always with podcasts is to find the up and comers rather than go get the people that everybody's hearing from now. So, so week two will be subject matter experts uh, tying into the subject. So it's less about talking about their story and more about diving into a subject matter that I believe will help you as you pursue your authentic life. Uh, the third episode uh, of the month may be a solo episode whenever necessary. Um, we'll see. I'm going to actually pay attention to the analytics to see, do you all like when I sit on the microphone by myself? It's not always the easiest thing to do, but I do enjoy it. And sometimes there will be subjects that I want to talk about by myself. These will probably be shorter episodes because it's just me, but whether it is sharing uh, my pursuit, whether it is sharing uh, deeper dives into the daily notes, I haven't figured out what those solo episodes might be. And they might be just free meaning I can make them each each time what I need them to be. So maybe one week it is diving into the most popular daily notes of the last month and giving more insight to them. 
Or it might be, hey, I had this experience. Here's something I've learned I want to share with you. Going to probably leave that open um, to let the universe and the flow of life determine what those episodes need to be like, but there will be a solo episode. And then the fourth episode of the month, I'm not going to tell you what it is yet. Um, I know what it is. I'm excited for it. I will just tell you that it is inspired by another very popular podcast, um, and that's all I'm going to tell you. So there will be a fourth episode. So that'll be the cadence. Every month, um, we'll have 12 guests a year from the Authentic Life Story, 12 experts a year, 12 solo episodes, and 12 of these mystery episodes. So really excited, and naturally, they'll be on podcasts. They'll be on the YouTube channel as well, but I'm really excited about having clarity around what this show or what this podcast channel is supposed to be and going into it. So I've been podcasting for six or seven years now, and I've never had a lot of consistency. I've never had a lot of direction. I just did it because I enjoyed it and had tons of great conversations, met a lot of great people. Uh, But, you know, because I wasn't the focus and it wasn't very specialized, the numbers, if that was was something I cared about, which it wasn't, don't reflect the time, effort, and energy and the quality of the show, if I'm being honest. And I want to make sure that this message is found because one of the things I've learned over the last month is that the message is resonating, the message is making an impact, and I want more people to find it. Now, I do believe that the universe will bring people to my channel, to the YouTube uh, channel, to the Daily Notes as they need it. But if I can do my part and leverage uh, social media and the algorithms to help people find it sooner, then I definitely want to do that. And that's where you all can come in as well and help out by sharing and rating and doing all those things that all the podcast shows ask you to do. Speaking of asks, I just want to draw your attention to the daily notes. I've mentioned it a couple of times in this episode, but I'm coming up on one year of writing a daily note. And that was not the intention when I started writing last year. So we're getting ready to head back to Marco Island uh, for the new year. That is when I started writing daily notes last year, and I have not missed a day since I started. And if you're not getting a daily note, you can get them in your inbox every single day. Um, They're also on LinkedIn as a newsletter. I would encourage you to sign up for the newsletter via email, and you can get to that through my website, justincaselli.io. You'll be able to get to the uh, daily notes from there. And um, because the reason I would encourage you to, to go the email route versus LinkedIn is I intend on bringing more to the email subscribers in the new year. I know daily notes are tough to always get. Our inboxes are always being full, and not everybody wants a daily email, but they want the daily message. So I'm going to be working on a format over the final weeks of the year for a weekly email, which will have all of the daily notes plus some extra content. I will not be putting that on LinkedIn. Um, It's great to have LinkedIn. I'm very appreciative of everybody who reads over there, and there's tons of great feedback. But at the end of the day, I want to have a more direct connection with all of you and those who want my message. And inbox emails are a lot easier than LinkedIn. So email is where I really want to drive people to. And that's where the daily notes are. So what are the daily notes? It's a short daily note designed to inspire, motivate you, keep you going on your pursuit, give you something to think about sometimes. And the cool thing about the daily notes is I write them every morning. So I get up, I do my morning routine do my morning meditation most days. And it's almost like in that meditation, I download the note for that day. And I have, you know, sometimes it's hard to write. I never struggle coming up with the subject. I never struggle getting it done in the morning and and post it out. So it's it's kind of a cool concept that these are not pre-thought. They're not premeditated. Uh, They come to me each day. And I look at it as this is the note I'm supposed to write for today. And somebody out there needs to hear it. And it's been a lot of fun to get emails and trade them back and forth with people reading the notes. So that's the daily note. The only parameter is I want them to be about spirit, mind, body, money, and creativity. Um, So as long as the daily note hits on those, it will be written and it will go out. You can get your email again. You can get on LinkedIn. I share it on Twitter. I share it on Instagram as well, uh, just to circulate it around. But I encourage you to sign up for the email. And again, you can get to that at justincastelli.io. In the daily notes, there's links and things there. So um, that is the, the, the plug that I'm going to do right now and would love for you to join me on that journey. And if you sign up for Daily Notes now and when I get the weekly one um, set up, if you want to switch to that, you know, we'll be able to switch people over so that they're not getting too many emails throughout the week, but they get the whole message. Although I do think that the beauty of the Daily Note is getting that note each morning because it was written that day for a reason. Now, I think the Daily Notes will live forever and they can mean something to somebody on any day, but there's a purpose for that note being written that day. That reading it in that day's you know, schedule, I think, is a little bit more uh, aligned with the purpose of the daily notes. But nonetheless, all right, enough on the daily notes. Um, so I mentioned I, I, I learned something in the last month about the, my message. 
you know, the authentic life and pursuing it and, and people wanting to find more fulfillment and, and lose the discontentment and find contentment. And the reason I learned that was from the Keep Pursuing series. So you may have seen post about it, maybe read about it, but the Keep Pursuing series was a wild idea that I had because I wanted to do more public speaking and I didn't want to wait for people to ask me to speak. I didn't want to hire a PR company. I just kind of want to do this myself and do it my way. Talk about things that I want to talk about. I get plenty of opportunities to talk throughout the year at financial planning conferences. And I really enjoy that. Like I love public speaking, which is why I want to do more of it. But I want to talk about the authentic life and things that lead into that. And I don't want to talk about advisor branding anymore or technology. Like those are conversations I'll have on the side because I still love those things. And those are all a part of who I am. But what I want to talk about nonstop is helping people find their authentic life. So I said, you know what? I'm not going to wait. I'm just going to create a, a series of talks. So I reached out to my local coffee shop, see if they would let me come in and rent the uh, coffee shop in the evenings after they closed. They said yes. So then I came up with five talks. Uh, when I approached them, it was an idea. I didn't have the talks lined out. Thankfully, they said yes, which forced me to come up with the, t the subject matters. And then I set up an Eventbrite and just started marketing it. Had flyers I put around town and just tried to drive up a little bit of interest with no expectations. What I decided with the series of talks was I was going to um, you know, visualize what I wanted it to be, visualize the impact that I wanted to have, write out the talks, write out the, 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 the series, and then let the flow of life after reading the surrender experiment by Michael Singer, let the flow of life, take it to where it needs to go. Knowing that this is the first time. And part of the reason for doing it is to fine tune my message, to learn how to speak in a different way. Uh, meaning not on a panel, not on a 20 minute, uh, session, having up to an hour to talk and try to keep people engaged on a subject matter that maybe they know what I'm going to be talking about. Maybe they don't. Um, and, and let it be what it be would be. And it ended up being more than I could have ever imagined. It was an amazing experience. So the five talks, if you hadn't followed along were, um, are you living somebody else's life, finding your authentic life, designing a plan to pursue your authentic life, regaining control of your mind, and evolving with your authentic life. And the way I wanted to structure these was I wanted each talk to be an independent talk. So if you couldn't come to all five, you shouldn't be, you shouldn't have been um, unwilling to come to one or two because they would each be meaningful. You would each learn something. Each time you came, you would walk away, you know, with more questions to ask yourself to kind of continue your pursuit on. But if you came to all five of them, then it told a whole complete story where they kind of stacked. So you didn't miss out by missing one, but it, you also got a more complete picture if you came to all five. And I wanted it to be that way because I know five evenings is a lot to ask for people to come to. And I didn't want people to not come to any because they couldn't come to all five. And um, I wanted it to be around the authentic life and in and, and subjects that I could talk about for 45 minutes or so with, with no interruption. And I was successfully able to do that. So, um, you know, the, the series kicked off with the first one and, and that was the one that had the greatest attendance because I had just come off of being on the news, talking about it, a lot of excitement behind it. I had a friend come in from Detroit and surprise me. I had a friend drive over from Columbus. He came to three of the talks, um, tons of people from my local community, a few clients, and then some people that I didn't know all showed up and the numbers stayed pretty strong through the whole series. Um, you know, no less than 10 to 11 people every talk with the first one being up close to 25. And I had a number of tickets that were claimed and people ended up not coming. So that was perfectly okay. I, I didn't care. I wasn't defining success by the numbers of people who came. Obviously, the more the better, but I really wanted to have a quality connection with the people who showed up. And I feel like I got that. So for this first series, the quality of the connection, the conversations I've had afterwards, the last couple of sessions, we actually did some Q&A. And that was feedback from the group that they wanted to have some Q&A time. And those Q&As were awesome. I'm actually going to release some of that content as some bonus content to see how the conversation picked up from the talk. So it was a great experience and I learned a lot. Um, and I'm, you know, pride is something, you, you know, not necessarily want to be too proudful, but I am proud of the series because, you know, it was something that I knew I wanted to do. I didn't know what it would be. And I knew I could do it, but at the same time, I didn't know if I could do it because I've never done it before. Um, and it was outside the box. It's something different. Not a lot of financial advisors or individuals create their own talk, a uh, series of talks and put it on. It was a challenge, again, because it's not something that I've done before. And it was an opportunity to, to make an impact. And it was an opportunity to perfect my message. And all of those things and more came from the series. 
So I thought, you know, what were some takeaways that I have? I have three takeaways that I've written down that I thought I would share to maybe help inspire you to try that thing you wanted to try or create an opportunity for yourself uh, and go pursue that and see what you learn from it. Because these experiments are, are learning opportunities. Yes, it's an opportunity for me to find more people who might value what it is that I have to say and maybe help them. But it's also just an opportunity to see, can I do this? And how can I do it better? And how can I have more impact the next time? Because there will be more next times. So the first one was, I confirmed that speaking is a part of my pursuit. I mentioned that I enjoy speaking and I want to do more of it. Uh, I've always thought that I was a good speaker um, because I enjoy it. So I think when you enjoy something, you're naturally going to be better than if you don't enjoy it. I've gotten good feedback. I've been asked to speak. I've been paid to speak. Um, So I've always enjoyed it and thought I was good. But this confirmed because people came back. You know, they came to the first one and they came to the second and they came to the third and they came to the fourth and they came to the fifth and they were engaged. Silas was the only person who fell asleep during any of my talks. Everybody else was engaged, taking notes. Um, I was asked to create slides to take notes on the slide. So people who were there wanted to be there, um, which told me my message was resonating. And I became a better speaker just in the course of five weeks because what I wanted to do is what I realized the first couple of talks were a lot of just me sharing my thoughts without really any stories. And I know how important storytelling is without any evidence to back it up. So once I realized, hey, I'm just up here talking my thoughts, that's impactful, but I'm, maybe people aren't connecting again because it doesn't resonate with them. I need to find some stories to tell. So then I began to intertwine stories into the message. And then I saw the feedback become even better. Um, so I learned how to think about writing a speech. And I actually wrote out my talks. Now, not to memorize them, but I wrote them out. Each one was about seven pages of bullet pointed sentences uh, where I could go through it and I could see the flow of the conversation. So I was able to move things around and say, no, that's not where it needs to go. It needs to go up here. And here's how I can flow it. Here's how I can transition. And actually treated these talks as if I was giving a keynote speech, getting paid $10,000. And most of my speaking opportunities to this point are panels where there's really not a lot of preparation there, or there's subjects that I'm comfortable just talking off the top of my head. And maybe I create an outline of bullet point subjects for the flow, but it's not to the extent of preparation that I did for this podcast or for this series of talks. So I became a better speaker because I learned how to prepare. I learned how to write. I learned how to intertwine stories to make it better. And I also was able to fine tune the message, clarify what it is that I'm saying, find better ways to communicate and even made some connections in the middle of a talk to a lot to to connect dots that I hadn't connected yet. So it was um, a confirmation of speaking is a part of what I'm supposed to do and I need to continue to improve. I need to make them more entertaining. I need to bring some more engagement into it. I did a sound bath in one of them, which was really cool. So finding ways to bring unique components to the to the talks to make them more memorable and to make them to where people want to come and engage in them, not just sitting up there and talking and sharing my ideas. There's a time for that, but the series is not that. Um, the second thing I, I learned and I think is important to share is that you've got to start with 10 before you can get to 1,000. And what I mean by that is, you know, Brene Brown has a, a, a special on Netflix where she's giving a talk on Netflix in front of probably thousands of people. You can't get to being on Netflix to give a talk without first talking in the coffee shop to 10 people. And um, that's just part of the process. You've got to start somewhere. And the, the number of people who show up isn't important. And I was prepared to talk to two people, my mom and my dad. I know they would show up. Ange and the boys, when there wasn't sports in the way, I knew they would be there. So I knew I'd have like five people. And I was prepared just to talk to my family just to get this thing rolling and put it out there and be able to document it and learn. So you've got to start small before you get big. It doesn't mean you don't visualize the Netflix special, but you got to realize that you got to start at the very beginning and build your way up. You don't get to Netflix without 10 to the coffee shop. So that was the, the second thing I wanted to share. And the third thing I wanted to share is we can accomplish anything that we want, but we have to believe in it. So while I didn't know if people would come and I didn't know what the series is going to be, I knew I could do it. There was no doubt in my mind I could do this. How big it would be, I didn't know, and I, I didn't care. So, you know, while what I accomplished is relatively small in the grand scheme of things, again, a coffee shop in Fishers, Indiana, 10 to 20 people showing up, but every time someone showed up and people came back and they were engaged. So we're able to do anything that we want. And when we believe in it and it's something we're passionate about, 
then the likelihood of success increases. And you should define success. For me, success was not having people lined up out the door. Not yet. That'll be success in the future. But for this one, it was, you know, can you do five talks? Can you write five talks? Can you get people to come to five talks on five separate evenings spread out over eight weeks because there was holidays in there and I was traveling on one of the Wednesdays? Can you do that? And that was the success there. So we can do anything now. It's how do I build upon that? And in the next year, the Keep Pursuing series is going to continue. It's going to be a little bit different. It won't be five weeks in a row, a monthly talk, different location in and around Indianapolis, and then hopefully opportunities in the future to take it on the road. Um, so the Keep Pursuing series is always going to be pursuing, um, and there's going to be more to it. And that's kind of how do I improve upon what I learned this first time. So that is everything I wanted to share from the Keep Pursuing series. And again, it, it was a really cool experience. I encourage you to go back, listen to the talks. They're all on the podcast. You can scroll down the podcast feed and you can see them all there. They're all on YouTube, so you can see it as well. And um, you know, I would welcome your feedback. What did you like about it? What did you learn? What are you going to change because of something that you heard? Um, they were a lot of fun. I put a lot of effort into it, a lot of um, you know, time preparing. And I want to end with one moment of synchronicity that showed up in, in the series. And that moment of synchronicity was meeting my videographer, Morgan. So I knew going into the series I wanted to document this because there's an opportunity to create content around this message, which would ultimately you know, potentially drive people to the talks, but also help me grow the message, share the message with more people, let people see me speaking to bring me in to speak at their organizations or their um, companies, whatever it may be. Uh, and I needed a videographer. So I set my camera up on my tripod, but I wanted somebody that could be moving around and capture some, some great video content and then make some cool videos. So I, I put it out to my network and uh, a friend of mine introduced me to Morgan. We had a real quick call um, on my way home from Disney over fall break. I could just feel the energy through that, that phone call. I knew she was going to be great. I had seen some of her work and it was all basketball related, but I figured if she can shoot basketball that well, then she can certainly shoot me sitting still or standing still uh, and talking with no problems. And immediately when we met in person, it was an instant connection. Uh, we had very similar ideas. The videos that she put together, I gave her no direction, and they were absolutely perfect. From the music that she picked, to the shots that she made, to, to everything about it. So the moment of synchronicity was us meeting, and the reason it was you know, a moment of synchronicity is because it was beneficial for both of us. Um, you know, I needed a videographer to help me take my stories and bring them to video life, for YouTube, for social media. And ideally, I would love to have somebody that I work with all the time. Um, that's going to be Morgan. But at the same time, photography and videography is a passion of Morgan's that she wants to do more. And in the first talk, she told me, told me this. So it was synchronicity for her because the talks were right when she needed them and helping her pursue her authentic life. But now we both can help each other and grow together, which is going to be really cool. So one of the things that we're going to be working on in the beginning of the new year is creating a documentary um, I'll say a documentary, that might be too strong of a, a term, but a documentary of the Keep Pursuing series. So going back and you know, finding some great clips, talking about the series, interviewing some of the guests, and creating a documentary about the Keep Pursuing series, giving you a behind-the-scenes look, uh, but also highlighting some of the great messages in it as well. And we have more projects that we have lined up for the year as well. So it was really cool to find, you know, I could have found just anybody to record a video and put things together, but to find the person that I believe is going to grow with me and I'm going to grow with her is really, really cool. Um, so that is the moment of synchronicity because I talk about synchronicity throughout uh, the series. There's all these little cues from the universe that are telling you you're moving in the right direction. People come into your life at the right time, and that's what I think Morgan is, and I think I am for her as well, which is mutually beneficial, which is really, really cool. So with that, I'll... I'll end this episode um, with I'm excited for 2024 and what it means for the Life Design Plus podcast. I'm glad to have you uh, upon for the ride. If you're not subscribed, I want to encourage you to subscribe because as you heard, there's going to be a lot of episodes coming out on a regular basis and I don't want you to miss out. And if you can do your part to help spread the message, whether that be leaving reviews, leaving comments, um, sharing the show, sharing episodes with people you think might benefit from the message, I would greatly appreciate it. Um, I still believe it will find who it needs to find, but if we can do our help to you know, help them find it a little bit faster, do our part, then I, I'm, I'm all down for that as well. So with that, I will let you get going. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, again, be sure, be sure to subscribe. 
I want to thank you for joining me on my pursuit. It is an honor to be a part of yours, and let's keep pursuing.